I get to the next day. I'm standing at my, I'm just standing at my, <clears throat> in my kitchen at the stove, and I'm making some eggs or some spaghetti, yeah. and I'm going, scorch the earth, scorch your brain, and I'm going, that's it. This is the way this shit works. It's mm -hmm. the simplest fucking thing. So I'm hoping that that bleeds into the next record that. Moshpit Passion, you know, for the passion of the music. Herzlich willkommen hier bei Moshpit Passion auf YouTube. Ich bin der Kai und wie ihr sehen könnt, ich bin nicht alleine hier neben mir. Blitz von Overkill. Wer uns so ein bisschen verfolgt, der weiß, wir haben in den letzten Jahren das ein oder andere Special gemacht, sei es ein Vlog zur letzten Tour oder auch das große Vinylbox Reissue und ach, ich kann einfach hier Stunden von dieser Band erzählen und ich würde einfach mal sagen, da unsere Zeit auch limitiert ist, dass ich jetzt übergehe ins Englische. First question is the most obvious one. Uh, how is the tour so far? Are you happy? Yeah, if I'm four days. Four days, new drummer. This is the fifth show. We're in Cologne right now. Mm. Uh, we started over in the east, in Romania, which was fun. Festival outside, and then Istanbul, which is like, man, those people still have the, the fire. <laughs> Crazy show. I saw something uh, interesting. Um, it is actually the sixth time that you are coming to Europe since 2020. And it's the fourth time during the uh, Scorched Cycle. First one was the main tour last year in spring. Then you did a couple of fly-in shows in summer. I think a fly-in show in December. And now the fourth time with the full oh, shit. tour again. That's right. The, the December one was in Eindhoven. It was the Eindhoven Metal Meetings. Yeah. Um, right, and maybe a couple of festivals over the summer. Yeah. Belgium, was it? Alcatraz? No, we, we, can, we canceled those. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got, we came back from, we had a U.S. tour um, that led right into those shows. It was, it, was a, it was a very unusual circumstance. We were finishing up the tour in Boston. Everybody got COVID, and it was a, it was a hit. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just like, ah, oh, it's COVID, like it was in bed, and I mean, we had to get some medications, et cetera, et cetera, and we were getting better, but we had a show in between the end of the tour and coming to Europe. And that was, we played with Metallica at- The parking lot thing? The, par yeah, yeah. the parking lot. But it was like, it was a great, it was a festival stage. Yeah. It was like, they had this fenced off area for 10,000. So we had the 10,000 in and there was all people around the outside of it. It was just fucking great. It was like a captive audience. Yeah. <laughs> so, but we didn't make it over for Alcatraz or I think Brutal Assault was the ah, other one. Okay, okay. Oh. Yeah thought because I was planning to visit the uh, Alcatraz thing and then I think something happened with my job that I couldn't uh, visit that and I was like okay I skipped that and uh, I didn't recognize that, that you canceled. Uh, that was a Forbidden came back at that wasn't it? Wasn't Forbidden on that show? I don't know. Yeah because Steve is now and he's opening with one machine on this tour. Yeah. Steve Smith. Yeah. So. yeah what I want to ask is this kind of heavy touring after all these years is it still a blessing or more or less a curse because it's unfortunately the main income for bands because record sales are more or less down and uh, yeah this kind of heavy touring for you what are your feelings about that well it's a, you know it's a unique situation i think um i think the modern era really it crushes the center of of um, bands when it comes to record sales when it comes to touring I mean, you have to find other ways to make revenue because touring is very fucking expensive mm. and nobody wants to pay more for a ticket. So when they're getting $300 for the Taylor Swift tickets or $300 for the Metallica tickets or euros, whatever it may be, it, it, it trickles down and hurts us because people don't, if that's what the market will bear, if that, the 300 euro ticket, it doesn't mean that they have 40 to spend on overkill then. Mm. They have to... To get that 300 euros, they have to cut out another seven shows or something that they would normally see for 40 or 45 euros. So it's just a matter of economics. But I think that for me, on a personal level, um, man, I smoked for a long fucking time. I vaped for a 10 year period of time. I got rid of all of that. I got rid of the smoking in 2012. I got rid of the vaping a year and a half ago. It's given me kind of a new lease on things. I mean, I'm obviously no, I'm not 25 and I can't do those backflips and jump off the stage like I used to. But fuck, I can sing like a 
better than I have in fucking years because there's no shit in my lungs, you know? So I think that with that adjustment, it hasn't been laborious. It hasn't been something that is, um, is tiring. So I look forward to it. As long as we don't do it too much, I really look forward to it. Usually if a band is touring, American bands are touring two times in Europe and you did a lot, also a lot of touring uh, during the whole, uh, let me say, Scorch album cycle. It is more or less coming to an end because the record is now one and a half years uh, uh, old. Are you also a bit sad that it's coming more or less to an end for this record cycle because everybody is loving that record and everybody's also saying yeah it's uh, record number 20 but it's so good not in a disrespectful way when it comes to the previous records but it's more like an outstanding record and everybody is in enjoying it i don't know um, if you also feel the same way and also like i said um, do you feel a little bit sad that this chapter is ending or like is it something for you that you say hey the next one should be a better better record or uh, even also a nice uh, banger i see i see i see where you're going with it i i don't know if there's a sadness attached to it because i think we gave it enough um We're, we're like I said, we're going to go back. And we're going to do King Diamond for seven weeks after this. I mean, so our, this touring cycle is not done for us, and there'll be a few songs from, from the Scorch record in there. Um, I do feel from the crowd, uh, from the audience, from I guess the people that have been into this band forever, that this was something special about this record. And I think that what was special is that we really paid attention to the production. Mm. Uh, Colin Richardson, um, who did the mixing for us um, with Christopher Clancy. Uh, Colin's got an understanding of this band. He just knows how to make us sound great. Um, he's helped us out in the past and done some, some really great shit in really lean times. Like he did a record called uh, Killbox. Mm. And uh, the Killbox record was not in the most popular era of heavy metal. It was like 2004 or something. But that is one heavy fucking piece of real estate. You know, mm. that is not just like, ah, just a record. It's like fucking a Colin Richardson production. And we wanted to... Not, let's say, recreate that, but I think that getting him involved and the way the writing got together, it made the record totally cohesive. Mm -hmm. It's not about the feeling that the title track gives you or the song Fever or the song The Surgeon. It's about the whole fucking record. It's got a yeah. feeling about it. And I think that that's what's special about still making records. Mm -hmm. But I'm not thinking in terms of sadness, and I'm also not thinking in terms of what's the future going to bring? Are we going to make another banger? We're gonna do what we do. You know, let's hope for the best fucking results. Let's put the same, you know, formula together that worked for Scorched and made it an outstanding yeah. record and maybe we succeed again. It's very interesting what you said when it comes to this uh, record and also the year 2005 because I saw in an interview that you said during the time from uh, 94 to 2005, it was for you, uh, actually for the band, uh, a dark time, but you le learned also a lot and you reinvent also yourself or for instance, Overkill. And also the sound, the record is also like something new, a new direction for instance. And like you said, there's some kind of full circling coming together with this record. And what I would like to know, um, this kind of reinventing thing is it something that you took maybe for your next record like all right we took it in this direction but it's uh, it would be record number 21 let's go in another different direction or yeah it's interesting way to put it um i don't think i don't think directional changes are necessarily recognized by the outside it's more recognized by the inside because I'm involved in all the, the interior workings of the band. You know, we're like the mechanics that keep the machine running. Um, so we know when something needs to be changed or whether it be a, a, an individual. You know, Jason was coming to the end. He was like, listen, he's a great drummer. Don't get me wrong, he's a good friend. Uh, but it was like he just felt that, that change was coming because the tension can be a good thing in a heavy metal band. But if too much tension could be, could bring you to your own demise, you know, it can destroy everything. So I think that reinvention, especially at this age, which is obviously very young, as you can say. <laughs> But at this age is um, not necessarily the right way to think of things. I think the way to think of it at, at 65 is what are my strengths and can I make my strengths stronger? Now, when I talk to you about, you know, dropping the cigarettes and the vaping, I got stronger, yeah. which is fucking weird for like a guy who's been doing this for, 
you know, because guys don't live as long as this. You know, you know what I mean? Let alone in rock and roll. You know, so I think the fact that, you know, I could put cigarettes down and go, I could sing all the time now. Mm. I don't need to, I, it's only going to make the records better. Mm. And I think that that was one of the, for sure, one of the feelings that we got through Scorched was like, listen to this fucking, we sound like a fucking young, mm. fucking hungry, fucking we fucking mean it band, you know? And that's what the fucking metal's all about. So I'm not gonna overthink it, I'm not gonna reinvent, mm. but I'm gonna play to the strengths. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't wanna say it sounds like an advice or something like um, more or less close the door to bad habits, what you said, you quit smoking. But um, also did a small research and uh, you said something, or let me say it this way, you got asked about if you got any advice to any band out there. And you said you don't give any advice because it's some kind of rule to shut uh, the mouth, do your thing, etc. And for me, it sounds a little bit like, um, yeah, um, that maybe not bands, or at least young bands should think about their habits because... There are many stories about, let me say, bad habits, why bands broke up, etc., or never get a higher chance or yeah. opportunity, something like that. And would you maybe, um, let me say, this kind of question, if you get asked again, which advice would you give to the people, say, ah, would, I'm a little bit open about that, or still st uh, stick to this statement like, uh, shut your mouth, do your thing? I, you know, listen. The fact that I just mentioned my age means I have experience. You know, Didi and I go into a room to negotiate something and there's two guys in there and they're both in their 40s or 50s. Mm -hmm. He'll whisper in my ear, we got more experience than both of these people. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. And it's the truth. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's one of my strengths. Um, I think I'm, I'm only stating the obvious um, when it comes to that. And I'm, I'm giving you how I look at it. Now, when it comes to telling somebody how to rock and roll, don't fucking do that. Rock and roll is rock and roll. I'm not going to say, oh, you should live a clean life. Fuck that. You should go out and be as dirty as you fucking want. Go get fucked. Get high. I don't really give a shit. Mm. Do your fucking thing. I mean, my advice isn't going to fucking help you. What's going to help you is hard fucking work and, and a great songwriting. Mm. That's what's going to help a, a, a younger band, but not fucking giving up cigarettes, for instance. Mm. I did it to make myself stronger. If somebody gets something out of that, God bless you. Yeah. But I would, I would never listen. That's like, would you think Lemmy would ever tell you how to rock and roll? Yeah. He's not. Gonna, yeah, yeah. He's not going to tell you how to rock and roll. He's going to say, just do what feels right. You mentioned something interesting when it comes to uh, the songwriting. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about a possibility or possible new songwriting sessions for an upcoming new record or anything? Stuff like that. Well, we just kind of we kind of slot it into a a time frame. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at, I suppose, the majority of the first half of 2025 as being that time frame mm -hmm. uh, for the writing, and probably recording by the end of 2025, and then releasing in 2026. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know, I don't know where, where, who we're going to release with. Okay. I mean, I assume it's Nuclear Blast. They have one more option. Yeah. Um, there's no direction that we're looking at. Mm. I mean, you know, the last record, it, it took shape and I could feel it taking shape. And I remember, I mean, it was just so fucking simple. I was, you know, I was writing through, through the pandemic. So it was like, for me, it was like, oh my God, thank God I got somewhere to go. I was me and my dog mm. done, right? In the house. So Didi had put these, it put these like, you know, oh, 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 in, this, in one of the songs, I'm like, what are you doing? I mean, as soon as you do that, mm -hmm. it sticks in my head and I can't get rid of the thing. So I call him back and I say, give me another, give me one without that background vocals. He goes, okay. So he mixes one, he sends it to me. I get it the next day. I'm standing at my, I'm just standing at my, <clears throat> in my kitchen at the stove and I'm making some eggs or some spaghetti. Yeah. And I'm going, scorch the earth, scorch your brain. And I'm going, that's it. This is the way this shit works. It's mm -hmm. the simplest fucking thing. So I'm hoping that that bleeds into the next record, that mm -hmm. it's not like this hard, painstaking thing. But I mean, if you can write a song or the, 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 the vocal line to scorched while you're making an omelet, mm -hmm. you're, you're doing something right. <laughs> so. 
All right, Lutz, I see also our time is running out. My last question is because our magazine is called Mosh Pit Passion. Do you have okay. any kind of silly, crazy Mosh Pit experience to say or share? Is there some kind of show, some kind of memory which comes up in your head where you say that was completely crazy or is your favorite one? There's a, there's a, a group, um, especially the Germans would know it. I'm sure they're our fan club here called the Skull Crushers. Sure. Uh, very famous, probably more famous than the band. Yeah. And, and beyond just a fan club, they're fucking friends. You know, I've slept at their houses and, you know, we go out. I mean, we had a day off in Bamberg one, one year, just like going from brewery to brewery. To brewery. Nice. <laughs> Free perfect, drinks. Perfect thing to do yeah. in Bamberg. Um, but we were doing a show. I think it was a German show. It was over, I think, on the Dutch border. Yeah. Um, and it was like in a town hall. Uh, type of thing like uh, Stotthaler, mm -hmm. and uh, at the end of the show, I did the I dove into the pit like I was doing for years. So I landed on top of a couple of the skull crushers. They bounced me up all the way to the back of the venue, laid me on the bar, and then gave me a beer. So <laughs> <That's nice. laughs> this, is my, this is my favorite my favorite stage dive. <laughs> no, it's also very close with the. Fan club, yeah. a nice very story. And for the viewers out there, um, please check out our description. There can you find all kind of overkill stuff like the current record Scorched. Please check it out. Support also the band in social me medias. Thank you very much for watching. Blitz also, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. See you tonight at the show here in Cologne. Gonna Bye. be fucking great. Bye. Good passion, you know, for the passion of music.